Well, I've been interested in actually talking about sex in comics for almost as long as I'd been doing comics because this was rooted in my approach to, to characterization. in that if you're going to do a character in a comic, whether it's a sort of quantum superhero or a shambling mass of vegetation or whatever, then it should at least be a fully rounded character, which means that like most normal human beings, it should have a sexual element to its nature. This is Dorothy that I'm drawing. I've made her quite big, actually, so you're not going to see as much hair as I thought. When you're trying to get a character right, you're sort of doing little dances to sort of imply their energy, and you, you get very much into their sort of personal shape being a little bit like their physical shape, the, the shape of their personality is like the physical shape, like the way they move. Dorothy's eyebrows are actually go down a little bit at the corners and then eyes are down to go just a little bit at the corners because she's a little bit sad. We would both enjoyed each other's work for a number of years and uh, it seemed natural that we should collaborate on this. And um, it was Melinda who, while we were talking about what we wanted to do in terms of a pornographic narrative, uh, I mentioned my lame Peter Pan idea. She mentioned that she enjoyed stories that had got three main women characters. The ideas cross-fertilised. And I suppose it was a natural step to think, all right, if Wendy from Peter Pan is one, of these three strong women characters, who would the other two be? And to jump from there to Alice in Wonderland and Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz is probably not rocket science. But once we'd got those three characters in place, then the whole idea just exploded into being from there. She was the oldest of the three women, according to the chronology that we'd cooked up for them. And I started to see her as this slightly opium addled, very graceful, very beautiful, elderly, aristocratic British lesbian. I could see Wendy perhaps growing up into a very repressed, middle-class, middle-aged mother who had perhaps had some incredibly torrid sexual experience back in her youth, but that this had frightened her um, regarding sex, and that she had tended to put all sexual expression into this shadow world. With Dorothy, she was obviously from a blue-collar working-class background out there in the farms of the Midwest. So that was the point at which we realised that not only had we got three women of different ages, which uh, was something that I quite liked, but that we both quite liked, because all too often in erotic narratives it's assumed that everybody is 25 and beautiful, with only one body type. Um, that in no way re reflects my experience of sexuality or, or anybody else in the real world, if we're honest. So I was quite pleased to have these three different ages of women, three different body types, and then when I realised that they were actually from three different classes, that seemed to add a different layer to the narrative, because you can talk about the class basis of a lot of sexuality. <laughs> I think that it's the very idea of it which is controversial. For one thing, from the very inception of Lost Girls, I've insisted upon calling this pornography. For one thing, I think it's a bit less pretentious than calling it erotica. Um, and also because I think the only difference between pornography and erotica is the income bracket of the person reading it. 
But uh, yes, if you've had a decent education and can understand all the French double entendres, then erotic is the thing for you. But my dad would probably have to buy pornography. So we thought it was more down to earth to refer to it as pornography right from the inception.